If you ask a random Jew about The Big Lebowski, assuming that they've seen it, their response would probably be something like, Shomer Shabbos. Shomer Shabbos. Out of Roland Shabbos. The first time I saw this movie, I was shocked. I could not believe that they were talking about Shabbos in a mainstream movie, especially in such a way. I don't roll on Shabbos. So let me explain who Walter from The Big Lebowski is and why is he so aggressive about Shabbos? The story of The Big Lebowski takes place in Los Angeles in the 1990s, as the narrator of the film explains to us in the opening. Now this here story I'm about to unfold took place back in the early 90s, just about the time of our conflict with Saddam and the Iraqis. We can see evidence of this. Uh, George Bush is talking on TV about Saddam Hussein's invasion of Kuwait. This will not stand, this aggression against uh, Kuwait. The movie Big Lebowski is about many things, but it's really about one person, the dude. The movie follows the story of the dude who gets mistaken for a different Jeffrey Lebowski, who is an apparent millionaire, and then the millionaire's wife gets kidnapped, and the dude and his friend Walter get tangled into this mess. Now, this is a really funny movie, not because of any joke in particular, but just the way Dude and Walter interact, like they're always arguing with each other. And that energy is so captivating. Like the story is great, but it just really feels like you get to chill with the dude for like two hours. He's the man for his time and place. He fits right in there. Although the dude is a product of his time, the hippie movement when he was young, and urban living in the 1990s, Walter is also a product of his time, specifically the Vietnam War, which was really an overwhelming experience for Walter and has shaped him ever since. Smokey, this is not Nam, this is bowling, there are rules. Hey, Walter, come on. And in the present, Walter is really engaged in the politics of his time, like the invasion of Kuwait. Also, before we continue, this movie has bad words, so consider who you show the rest of this video to. Sorry, Mom and Dad. You have to use so many cuss words. The fuck are you talking about? <laughs> okay, dude. Have it your way. Take her easy, dude. Walter is the opposite of the dude in many ways. Firstly is Walter's aggression. And secondly, his love of tradition. Throughout the film, Walter's quoting Theodore Herzl and the Rambam. Meanwhile, the dude is a weed-smoking pacifist. Just take it easy, man. You know, that's your answer for everything, dude. And let me point out something. Pacifism is not, look at our current situation in Iraq. Pacifism is not something to hide behind. Just take it easy, man. Walter's aggression is a constant in this movie and gets triggered by literally anything, whether it's the political situation with Saddam. We're talking about unchecked aggression here. Or it could be a server at a diner. Excuse me, sir, could you please keep your voices down? This is a family restaurant. Oh, please, dear. For your information, the Supreme Court has roundly rejected on, prior restraint. This is not a First Amendment thing. The truth is that all of this seems to come from Walter's experience in Vietnam and the carnage that he witnessed there. And so his aggression is like an attempt to make all of that destruction worth it. If you don't calm down, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Lady, I got buddies who died face down in the muck so that you and I can enjoy this family restaurant. All right, I'm out of here. Hey, dude, don't go away, man. Come on, this affects all of us, man. Our basic freedoms. I'm staying. The most extreme, and as a result, the most famous example of Walter's aggression is the very famous line, you're entering a world of pain. You're entering a world of pain, Walter, man. You mark that frame and eight, you're entering a world of pain. I'm not. A world of pain. So at this point, we know that Walter is aggressive, but. What's this day of rest shit? What's this bullshit? I don't fucking care. It don't matter to Jesus. 
Shabbos is the Jewish day of rest, which comes from the Torah, and in practice there are 39 categories of labor that are not permitted to be done on Saturday. These include things like threshing grain and tanning leather, but in modern times, a few examples of things that cannot be done on Shabbos are going to work, making purchases, and the use of electricity. So guess what happens when Walter, who's apparently Jewish, finds out that his bowling tournament is on Shabbos. They post the next round for the tournament. When do we play? It's Saturday. Montana. Saturday. Well, I have to reschedule. Walter, what am I going to tell Lebowski? I told that fuck down at the league office. Who's in charge of scheduling? Walter. Burkhalter. I told that crowd a fucking thousand times I don't roll on Shabbos. Walter. They already posted it. Well, they can fucking unpost it. Who gives a shit? Uh, they're gonna kill that poor woman, man. How come you don't roll on Saturday, Walter? I'm Shomer Shabbos. Ah, uh, the line. He said the line, guys. So Walter is Shomer Shabbos, which means he keeps his Jewish day of rest. And so Walter explains this, why he doesn't roll on Shabbos. And as a friend of mine put it, this is actually a pretty accurate and very succinct way of explaining it. Saturday, Donnie, is Shabbos, the Jewish day of rest. That means I don't work. I don't drive a car. I don't fucking ride in a car. I don't handle money. I don't turn on the oven. And I sure as shit don't fucking roll! Sheesh. Shomer Shabbos! Walter, how am I going to... Shomer fucking Shabbos. Oh, fuck. I, that's it. I'm out of here. Just to get technical for one second, the act of bowling, that is throwing a bowling ball at pins, might be permitted according to some rabbis. There's many other issues that come up. There's driving to the bowling alley, there's paying for the use of the alley, there's writing the score, the mechanism to that puts the pins back up is electronic, and there's also an issue of doing weekday-like activities on Shabbos, on the day of rest. I don't know if the reason why Walter doesn't bowl on Shabbos comes from a place of halacha, you know, caring about these specific ritual laws that we just mentioned, or whether it just comes from a general Jewish feeling. Either way, we know that that feeling of Jewishness is there because it comes out when he breaks Shabbos for the dude because he thinks it's an emergency. Here we are, it's Shabbos, Shabbos. the Sabbath, which I'm allowed to break only if it's a matter of life or death. Now this of course is halachically correct, but this is a great moment because we get a deep insight into Walter's Jewishness, into his Yiddishkeit. You come off it, Walter. You're not even fucking Jewish, man. What the fuck are you talking man, about? You're fucking Polish Catholic. What the fuck are you talking about? I converted when I married Cynthia. Yeah, come on, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and, know this. Yeah, and five fucking years ago, you were divorced. So what do you say? When you get divorced, you turn in your library card, you get a new license, you stop being Jewish? This again is also true. Once someone converts to Judaism, they can't just rescind their Jewishness. The dude challenges the entire notion of Jewishness, of Yiddishkeit, since he says it's just a bunch of ideas from the past. You're living in the fucking past. 3,000 years of beautiful tradition from Moses to Sandy Koufax. You're goddamn right I'm living in the fucking past. Amen, brother. Amen. But there's a deeper question here. Why is Walter so adamant about Shabbos. Where does this character trait even come from? As we've seen, both the dude and Walter are products of their time, but Walter specifically draws from the past. His aggressive approach to keeping Shabbos actually is modeled on a character that existed in Jewish cities called the Shomer Shabbos Enforcer. Who's in charge of scheduling? Walter. Burkhalter. I told that crowd a fucking thousand times I don't roll on Shabbos. Walter. They already posted it. Well, they can fucking unpost it! Who gives a shit? In medieval times, each town had a man called a clopper who would go around and knock on people's windows, letting them know it was almost Shabbos and it was time to close up shop. In modern times, many of these Jews left the towns and went to big cities where a lot of them became a lot more secular and observed a lot less of these ritual laws in Judaism. Also, a lot of these secular Jews organized into labor unions and social welfare societies. In response to this, a lot of religious interests also began to organize in order to promote the idea of keeping Shabbos. A few years ago, I read a book by Eddie Portnoy, who tells of different stories that were recorded in the Yiddish press from cities like Warsaw and New York in the turn of the last century. And one of these stories is about 
the Shomer Shabbos enforcers. He begins by showing a picture of the original Shomer Shabbos organization that was taken in Berlin in 1930. Now, this photo was taken a year after the organization was founded, and by that time, it already had 2,000 active members across the world. The original intention of this group was to petition governments to allow Jews to switch their Sabbath from Sunday to Saturday to Shabbos. But when that didn't happen, members of the Shomer Shabbos organization began to enforce traditional law. As Portnoy put it, they were willing to preserve the sanctity of Shabbos at all costs, even if it meant breaking a few skulls. Does this sound like Walter yet? In his book, Portnoy details several crazy stories of how these giant brawls would break out in the streets of a Jewish neighborhood when someone would refuse to stop breaking Shabbos in public. I'll link an article by Eddie Portnoy below so you can read some of these stories for yourself. The original Shomer Shabbos organization was disbanded a few years later. I mean, it was Berlin in the 30s after all, but its legacy has remained from Berlin and Warsaw to the Big Lebowski all the way to New York and Israel today. Modern versions of this organization have been reestablished in order to enforce companies to keep Shabbos, although unlike Walter, <laughs> they don't do it violently. For example, the Vad Shmira Shabbos, which is related to political parties in Israel, threatened the boycott against El Al when they were thinking of having flights on Shabbos. And another example that I personally remember, throughout the 2010s, the Vad Mishmera Shabbos here in Brooklyn would put on parades in order to inspire businesses to close shop on Shabbos. The movie Big Lebowski is one of those classics that you can rewatch over and over again and discover new elements each time. And one of those elements is, of course, Walter's Jewishness. The pacifist attitude of the dude has inspired a cult following, which means some people have become truly obsessed with this film and has also inspired a spin-off religion known as Dudism. And so, although the dude inspired a following, it was the Shomri Shabbos following that inspired Walter. If you are still listening, thank you for being here. Welcome to the end of this episode. Here on Yiddish Shikino Club, we're going to discuss a big Jewish theme that comes up in a movie each week. And so if there's a movie that you think I must cover, you should let me know. Next, we'll discuss how important is it to appear Jewish as we watch one of the most famous French comedies called Rabbi Jacob, or really Rabbi Jacob. <laughs>